Hey everyone, welcome back to my kitchen and welcome back to another monthly freezer meal prep. I like to show you guys what I'm prepping for the month. So once a month, I like to make a nice little list of meals that I can throw into the freezer for crazy busy days and it just makes planning out my weekly meal plan a lot easier, which if you guys haven't checked my channel out, you guys can look at how I do weekly meal preps as well but this is what I like to do about once a month where I put all of the meals together that I'm going to be popping into the freezer so this first meal is a garlic butter turkey meatballs with zoodles if you guys have been watching the last little while you know that I've been on a major kick with zoodles we have got tons and tons of zucchini growing in our garden and it's just a good way to use it up to find all of these fun recipes so if you have a garden with zucchini in it you may be having the same kind of problems and so I hope that this inspires you and even if you don't have a garden sometimes at farmers markets and other places like that you can find zucchini for very very cheap this time of year since everybody has so many and they just produce a lot off of one plant. So the first thing that I did was mix up the meatballs and as usual I will have all of the recipes linked below in the description box. Either that or else I type the actual recipe out in the description box one or the other you will find it all there and I love both yellow and green squash so I tend to use both of them and I like to be able to mix them as well. I do think they have a little bit of a different flavor but either way they're just so refreshing and delicious. And I know a few videos back I shared this zoodle or zucchini noodle maker and I'm just going strong with it. It's so convenient and makes my zucchini noodles so quickly. So you're just going to fry up the meatballs and I've really been leaning into making a lot of freezer meals that are already cooked. That way all I have to do is heat them up and they're very, very simple to make a very fast dinner instead of waiting for the meat or the protein to be cooking up. So I really have been just pre-making meals basically and just popping them in the oven or putting them in the skillet just to get them hot and ready to eat for dinner. And as usual with the zucchini noodles, it always looks like a huge pile, but as it cooks down, it really just kind of melts into half of what it was before. Once the zucchini noodles were pretty much cooked through, I decided to pull out one of my freezer pans. I will link these below. I've been getting so many requests lately for the link for these pans. You can get them in packs of eight, I believe. It's, it's either four or eight on Amazon. And they're just these fantastic pans with lids. And I like to put a layer of press and seal in between. And I have not had any problems with anything getting freezer burnt and it's just a great sustainable way to do freezer meals in nice inexpensive pans. Hey there, so I wanted to take a quick minute to thank Birch Living for sponsoring this week's video. If you guys remember, a couple of months ago, I got a Birch Living mattress and I wanted to sit down and kind of give you a little update on how I've been liking it. So I had been sleeping on memory foam mattresses for a couple of years and I really just felt like I needed a change. I needed something with more support than what I was getting and Birch Living came in at just the right time. I have been loving my Birch Living mattress. I feel like whenever I get in bed at night, I'm so rested and I go to sleep quickly. I'm not tossing and turning. It's just the right amount of soft and support that I need. This mattress is crafted with eight different layers of organic cashmere, organic wool, organic cotton, and 100% natural latex. The Birch Living mattresses are made right here in America and the mattresses are non-toxic 
and they're made with organic and natural materials, which is a huge plus in my book. The mattresses come in a box right to your door, which for me is so convenient. You don't have to go anywhere to pick it up. Another added benefit is they are allergen and mildew resistant. Throughout the creation of their mattresses, Birch ensures that their materials are produced and harvested sustainably. One of my favorite features is the organic cotton quilted Euro top. It is so soft and it just brings an extra softness and comfort to your bed that's sure to give you a relaxing night. Along with your Birch mattress, you get a 100 day sleep trial and a 25 year warranty. Like I said, I've been loving my Birch mattress and I think that you would too. So if you are looking for a new bed, you can check out Birch by going to the link below or you can go to birchliving.com slash Adeline to get $400 off of your mattress and two free pillows. Okay, so the next meal that we are going to make is actually, I kind of made two meals at one time. You all have been really, really requesting more sheet pan meals, which is perfectly fine with me because that is my favorite style of meal to make and prep. So the first one that I am doing here is a ham and pineapple sheet pan dinner. So I just sliced up some red potatoes since obviously their skin is really soft and tender and you don't really have to peel the skin off of them. And then I put some avocado oil into a bowl and I minced some fresh garlic and I just took a nice little silicone brush and really brushed these potatoes down. These were so yummy this way. I'm going to have to keep this in mind for future sheet pan meals just because it's a really simple way to do potatoes. And then I added some chives and I also added some of my pink Himalayan salt over the top of these. To the one side of the potatoes, I decided to cut up some carrot and I just cut it in kind of some strips. I like this the best, just chopping it into nice bite sized kind of sticks. And I just put them in a bowl with a little bit of the avocado oil, just kind of tossed them around and then laid them out on the pan. I know some people like to just drizzle a little bit of oil over their veggies, but I just really like to have them coated. So when I'm doing a veggie that's a little harder to coat, unlike the potatoes, I decided to just stick it in the bowl and mix it around that way. So I put some salt over these and then I chopped up some fresh parsley and just sprinkled that over the top of them as well. Okay, so I've never done ham this way, but I will be doing ham like this again. Everyone in our family raved about this ham. It was so yummy. So you just take a pineapple, you put it in to like half inch slices, and I did not have a corer, so I didn't core the pineapple. You could go ahead and do that step as well. And then I just cut the ham into nice serving size pieces, and you wanna just layer that in between the pineapple pineapple it transfers this delicious pineapple flavor to the ham and it is so so yummy and this stored very well also so it was great to just reheat and eat quickly the second sheet pan meal that I am giving you guys this week is a pan pork chops with sweet potato and apple. And this is really giving me all of the fall feels. I have been so thinking about fall lately. Just my home decor and even recipes for fall. Let me know in the comments if you're excited for fall recipes or maybe what one of your favorite fall recipes is. You guys can give me some ideas for all all of the fall inspiration recipes I'll be sharing this year. Um, last year I really shared a lot and it was so much fun. So I just took some sweet potato and diced it up and then I just took 
some oil and dump that over the top of course using avocado oil that's my go-to and has been for a while it's just very mild flavor so it really works well to not pull in another flavor and you get to really taste what you're roasting so for the pork chops we're going to kind of make our own dry rub so I had some fresh rosemary and fresh thyme oh, I love cutting fresh herbs like this they smell so good and you just feel like a little bit of a professional chef okay <laughs> Once they were chopped up, I added in some other dried spices, one of my favorites being smoked paprika. That's probably my favorite spice. I love putting that on things. And you're also going to be adding in some things like chili powder, just to bring in a nice warm flavor. Once you have all of your spices in the bowl, you'll just want to mix them up really well. And then I went ahead and took two small apples and just diced them up and put them in a separate bowl. You're not going to put them on the pan right away to roast since it would make them a little bit too soft, but you'll be adding them in at a later point. Next I got my pork chops out and it's great to get them to close to room temperature. It just helps them cook better and it also helps to get rid of any unwanted flavors on the meat. So right about this point my ham and pineapple meal was ready to come out of the oven. I can't even describe the scents that were coming from my kitchen this day. They, it just smelled so delicious. I had to run an errand and come back and when I came back and opened the door, the house just was wonderful smelling. Once you've allowed your sweet potatoes to kind of partially cook, then you're going to pull them out of the oven and you're gonna add in that diced apple. You're gonna throw your pork chops on and then you're gonna just roast it until those pork chops are fully cooked through and kind of to the crispiness that you like. I really let them get pretty dark. I just enjoy veggies when they're roasted a little bit darker along with the pork chops. and I used my little oil dispenser just to put a coat of oil on the bottom so whenever I reheat this in the oven, after I've thawed it out from the freezer, it won't stick to the bottom of the pan. And I will leave a link for that oil dispenser in the description box. That is another link you all have been requesting a lot lately. So I have been raving here on my cooking channel as well as on my home channel about these freezer bags, these reusable freezer bags. I love them so much. So this day I wanted to make up a beef stew and this is such an easy thing to prep. It really, really is simple. You just need a good chuck roast and you can chop it up into bite-sized pieces. I did try to cut out some of the fatty 
sections of it as well and just get it kind of ready to be eaten in a stew form. Okay, so the next freezer meal is a very, very simple one to prep as well. And that is a chicken bacon broccoli cheddar bake. And when you're gonna freeze broccoli, you always need to blanch it. So you're gonna wanna go ahead and get some water boiling. And I like to rip up my broccoli. It always saves a lot of mess if you don't really use a knife and you just use your fingers to get those broccoli florets separated. Then you're going to drop them into boiling water for about four minutes. Once they're done, you can put them right into your freezer pan and freeze them. So they just need that little bit of heat to help them not become freezer burnt. So you just want to chop up a pound of bacon and I think I had about two pounds of chicken that I diced up as well. You're going to put that, the broccoli, the bacon, the chicken, all of it together and then I topped it with some spices, some salt, and then I finished it off with some shredded cheddar. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and make some Sloppy Joe stuffed sweet potatoes. We are gluten-free in our house for the most part, and I thought this was such a genius way to use Sloppy Joes, so, or barbecue, or whatever you call it in your part of the world. Let me know in the comments what you call this type of meat. I know some people call it Sloppy Joes, some people call it barbecue. I think I've heard a few other names here or there. So it's basically just some ground meat with either barbecue sauce or I like to just do some mustard and ketchup 
and just mix it up with a little bit of brown sugar and while I was kind of putting the meat to the side I did go ahead and put some vent holes in some sweet potatoes and wrap them up in foil and get them baking these were huge huge sweet potatoes um, and they did take a little while to bake up but they were still delicious nonetheless once they were done baking I just put them in to one of my freezer pans and I kind of just cut them open you could scoop some out of the inside if you wanted to but I just decided it'd be simpler to just cut them in half and then I went ahead and piled my sloppy joes or barbecue inside of the sweet potatoes. Thank you guys so much for watching today. I hope this video inspired you. Let me know in the comments which recipe was your favorite and also subscribe if you're new. Give this video a like and I will see you all in my next video.